Well, good morning. Welcome to Blair First United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Gina Guile, and we are just so glad, so glad that you've joined us today on this fourth Sunday in Lent. Our beautiful flowers this morning are from Mike and Holly Mackey in honor of Carl Mackey. May his memory be blessed. The flowers uh, that you saw maybe as the camera panned over by the altar are from Carol McElhaney's funeral. Uh, may her memory be blessed. Just a reminder that we have resumed in-person worship services here at 1030. Those begin at 1030 a.m. We ask that you arrive no earlier than 1015. Mask and social distancing are required. However, we're not requiring registration this time around, uh, but if capacity becomes an issue, well, we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it. I hope you'll join us. Just a reminder of our mission project for March. It's Undie Sunday all month long. We uh, will be collecting undergarments, uh, diapers, and pull-ups for all ages. You may drop out items off in the receptacle just inside the east doors of the church, Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Or if you plan to attend the uh, 1030 in-person worship services, uh, bring your items then. You may also drop items off during a drive through that we're going to have on Saturday, March 27th from 9 to noon. And of course, we always accept monetary donations. Thank you so much for your generosity. Just another reminder and invitation to join me for those Lenten devotionals on Wednesdays here on Facebook Live at 4 p.m. If you're not able to hop on at 4 p.m., no worries. You can watch the devotionals anytime as it will stay on the page. Just scroll down to find it. Uh, you'll also find that on an upload uh, for YouTube. We try to upload that by Thursday morning and we email those out. Lastly, just a reminder to please send in your tithes and your offerings. Your faithful commitment helps us. It helps us to continue our mission and our ministries. You can send those offerings into the church office, or you might consider signing up for Vanco. Vanco is our online option, which is an easy and convenient method of direct withdrawal, similar to how you pay bills online. And we'd be happy to help you sign up for that as well. Again, thank you for joining us this day. May you be deeply enriched and blessed by this worship service as God surrounds you in this and your sacred space. At this time, I would like to invite one of our confirmands, Aubrey Brooke, forward to lead us in our ritual of light. Thank you, Aubrey. During Lent, we remember the events that led up to the crucifixion. Jesus had come to bring hope and light to the world, but at every step there were those who could not accept the power of the light. He came to meet the people's needs, but there were those who misunderstood the kind of needs that Jesus meant to fill. Because he would not do what they wanted, they rejected him. According to John, Jesus was teaching a large crowd who had followed him because they had seen his miracles of healing the sick. When Jesus saw the large crowd of more than 5,000 men and asked Philip, where can we buy enough food to feed all these people? Knew, Philip knew that they didn't have enough money to buy even a small amount for everyone. But Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, there is a small boy who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish, but there will certainly not be enough to feed all these people. Jesus had the people sit and then took the bread, gave thanks to God, and distributed it to the people. He did the same with the fish. Everyone had as much as they wanted, and, the, and when the disciples gathered what was left, they filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the barley loaves. Seeing this miracle that Jesus had performed, the people there said, Surely this is the prophet who, is, who was to come into the world. And Jesus could sense that they were about to make him king by force, so he went off again to the bills to be by himself. Jesus came into the world to change it, not to be made to fit into some mold that others felt was right. When Jesus refused to be what others wanted, they turned their backs on him, and a little of the light that had come into the world was put out.
good morning. Please join us for our opening hymn, How Great Thou Art. Today I will be telling you the story around the verse Matthew 19:14. So one day Jesus was teaching to people and uh, the children saw him and obviously wanted to go talk to Jesus because everyone loves Jesus. And they went up to try and see him and all these people said, oh, you can't do that. He's too busy right now working with all the grown-ups. He doesn't have time to talk to you. And Jesus saw this and he said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Now, obviously you weren't one of those children, but you might have had a time when you were playing with your friends and you went to ask your mom or your parent, can we have a snack or can we go to the park? And they said, no, I'm too busy right now. They were probably doing work or talking to a friend. Um, and sometimes adults are too busy to, you know, go to the park, but Jesus will never be too busy to listen to your prayers, and he will always be there to listen. Right. Please sing with us, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Thank you. 
Go ahead. Okay. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, and whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe in him are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come into the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Aubrey. Would you all pray with me? Oh, gracious and loving God, we do give thanks this day. We give thanks uh, for your word, your word, Lord, that surrounds us, transforms us, calms us, Lord, gives us strength in the most troubled times. Lord, I pray this morning these uh, words, Lord, this word that I preach, Lord, I, I pray it may be pleasing unto you. Lord, I, I pray that it penetrate hearts and minds and spirits, and Lord, that we, we take them to heart and take them out into the world. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, no doubt you heard a phrase in today's scripture reading that sounds familiar. The words are beautiful powerful, evocative even, for God so loved the world. It's no wonder that they've taken hold like they have. John 3.16, hear them again. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And it, it used to be quite common to see just the citation itself, right? John 3.16, spray painted maybe on a highway overpass or scribbled, you know, on the poster board held up at those televised football games. Many of us have, well, grown up in the church knowing this verse by, by heart. It, it was maybe one of the first verses that we were expected to recite and memorize, and even if we hadn't, we easily would have absorbed it by osmosis. But sometimes even beautiful phrases, no matter how lovely they are, can start to lose their luster due to overexposure. There's no need to listen anymore to something we already know or, or we think we know, or, or it's possible to never, it's possible to never really hear it at all. But John 3.16 is beloved by many and, and is considered to some to be the absolute baseline of Christian theology, the summation and completion of all the gospel, the very plan of salvation. So I certainly don't want to sound dismissive of it. But you know, for others, John 3.16, well, it's become like a scriptural hot air balloon so weighted down by the sandbags of familiarity and sentimentality. It's a sweet, it's a sweet verse. But you know, ironically, these very words that Jesus was speaking, they were to a rigid and legalistic Pharisee. Jesus is trying to help him see salvation more expansively. However, sadly, in many cases, this passage nowadays has also become rigid and legalistic, the very symbol of conditional, exclusive Christianity. You know, it sounds something like this. Maybe you've seen it on a billboard. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or go to hell for all eternity. <laughs> it gets weighted down again by that fear-based, fire and brimstone, Bible-thumping preaching. 
So this verse gets weighted down by both sides of the coin. It's difficult time, at times to give it any kind of spiritual lift off. The words almost hold no meaning at all. It's no wonder the loveliness of this verse has gotten lost in the muck of cliche and distortion. And as many a preacher has pondered, how does one preach? How does one preach a text that has become so cliche and distorted? And now on the anniversary, no less, the anniversary, no less, of one of the most difficult years for the church in recent history. How how does one preach a text that has become cliche, distorted in the wilderness, this long wilderness of a pandemic that has, well, has kind of been like luster in loveliness. It's been a difficult year in the world that God so loves. Shortly after the pandemic began, most of us headed into the land of online in some way, shape, or form. Online everything, school, work, family gatherings, and I would include my women's clergy group in that. We call ourselves the clergy chicks. (laughs) Pre-pandemic, we would gather at each other's churches for coffee, conversation, lectionary study, fellowship, and support. They are a great group of gals. Well, we wanted to continue, like most people, we wanted to continue meeting, so like everyone else, off to Zoom we went. Well, around the middle of May, one of the clergy members of our group, Michelle, shared a story about how the exhaustion was setting in. The exhaustion was setting in. She's a mother of a a three-year-old, a six-year-old, and an eight-year-old. Like so many parents, she had moved into the role of teacher, too, because of the distance learning. Also, like me, her living room had become the place for online church. Her her husband's office, well, it moved to their home, too. And many of you can relate and probably experienced your own effects of that drastic change in your homes with everyone being there all the time. <laughs> her children were feeling it too. Uh, her, uh, the, the night before our meeting, her, she, she had, you know, come bedtime, sent, you know, let's go to bed, kids. It's the time to go. Mom's had a long day. <laughs> it's bedtime. But her six-year-old son, Jake, well, he protested. <laughs> he protested his bedtime for the ump time in his young life. However, because of their disruptive household and daily routines, it had become more of a struggle. He was missing his friends. He didn't like online learning, didn't like what they had for dinner. (laughs) You get the picture. Frustrated by his mother's refusal to Well, to budge on bedtime, Jake finally became so frustrated that he said, Mommy, I hate you. Mommy, I hate you. Michelle, possessing the presence of mind I wished I more frequently had, especially when dealing with my children, she replied calmly, I'm sorry you feel that way, Jake, but I love you. And then what do you think Jake said, right? Oh, it's okay, Mommy, or maybe sorry, Mommy, I love you too. Nope. When Michelle told her son that she loved him, Jake yelled back, Don't say that. Don't say that. Surprised, Michelle continued, Jake, but it's true. I, I love you. Don't say that, Mommy, but I love you, Jake. Stop saying that, Mommy. Stop saying it right now. And then the response came almost completely out of nowhere, out of frustration, out of fatigue. She replied, Jake, now you listen to me. I love you. Like it or not, good night. (laughs) And off she went. But even at six years old, you see, Jake realized that in the face of this unconditional love, he was powerless. 
If Michelle had been willing to negotiate, you know, say something like, I'll love you if you go to bed nicely, well, then Jake, he, he would have been an active player. Okay, Mommy, this time, but I'm not eating my vegetables at dinner tomorrow. <laughs> but once Michelle refused to negotiate, refused to make her love for her son conditional on something Jake did, then Jake could do nothing but accept or flee that love. Well, you know, the same is true with us. The same is true with us with God's unconditional love. If God makes God's great love for the world and us conditional, those strings attached, then, then we suddenly have tremendous power. We can negotiate. We can threaten to reject God's love. We can even tell God to go take a hike if we don't care for God's terms. But you see, when God just loves us completely and unconditionally, and when God just goes and dies on a cross, well, then the gig is up. There's just nothing we can do to influence God. And that's just what happens in this John 3.16 verse. Listen to it once more. For God so loved the world that he gave an only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So here in what seems like an eternal Lent, right? An eternal Lent, the liturgical season and pandemic alike, we could surely use some joy found in this verse. And we find it, you know, as we hear that summation of the whole gospel message, for God so loved the world... And I think that's why, centuries ago, someone thought it was a good idea to make the fourth Sunday of Lent Laetare Sunday. Laetare Sunday in Latin means to rejoice. So in some traditions, this Sunday is set aside. It's set aside when we get to rejoice in the Lord. It's kind of like that third Sunday of Advent, Gaudet Sunday, which means joy. We, we light a rose-colored candle instead of a dark purple one. And you, want, and you know, over the years, I, I've had people, oh my goodness, I've had so many people argue with me over that unconditional part of God's love found in John 3.16. They struggle. They struggle to believe that God would not have some strings attached God will love me only if I go to church, feed the hungry, read the Bible, love my neighbor. That, that's the only way that God will love me, and so on and so on. There has to be a catch, right? Of course, I respond, no. <laughs> God still loves you, even if you don't do any one of those things. Oh, and they protest. They continue to protest, and, and I finally respond, you can't make God love you more by the things you do or don't do. You can't make God love you any less by the things you do or don't do. For God so loved the world. And inevitably, they'll respond with, well, what's the point then, Pastor Gino? What's the point of all of this? And I respond, yes, yes, what is God's point to all of this? Amen. At this time, I'd like to move into a time of prayer and offering. I want to remind everyone, if you're able, please send in your offering and your tithes. Your sacrifices help us in our mission and our ministries to share the love of Christ with the world in the world that God so loved. Your faithful stewardship and your sacrifice, it helps us and has helped us weather these past few months and helped us to be the church 
to be the church that loves, a missional church doing Christ's work through our mission and our ministries. Oh, but I know these are anxious times, and the future is still somewhat unknown. However, prayer, prayer always helps. God is with us always. The Lord already knows your concerns, your worries, and doubts. Let us now begin with a moment in silence. Oh, gracious and loving God, we give thanks for this opportunity to worship you, to spend time with you in this sacred space, a sacred space, wherever we are. Lord, and in our spaces and places, we are reminded of your unconditional love, your love for us through a cross. Oh, Lord, and we do, we thank you that you create in us clean hearts, clean hearts over and over by your mercy and your grace. Lord, as we continue in this season of wilderness, <laughs> such a long wilderness, we give thanks that you sustained us, strengthened us. Lord, we thank you for time and Lent that we do set aside time for deep deep examination. We thank you for your loveliness, your loveliness found in drawing near to you in this time of enrichment, nourishment, healing. Lord, we feel your love. We thank you for this time that you reveal in us those things that keep us from loving Keep us from being the human beings you intend us to be, the kind of human beings in our heart of hearts we want to be. We pause now and we pray for those near and dear to us. We pray this day for Sarah Jensen, who is home from the hospital. Lord, we pray for health and healing. We pray for Connie Arnold, who struggles with health issues uh, st uh, related to her heart and to her blood pressure, prayers for health and healing. Lord, we pray this day for all who grieve, not only a loss of our loved ones, we, we lift up the McElhaney family, but also, Lord, loss in so many ways, loss. Lord, we pray for any and all who grieve this day. We pray comfort and peace. Lord, we do lift up any and all this day who are battling illness. Lord, COVID, cancer, chronic, mental health issues. Lord, we, we lift them up to you. Lord, we pray for your grace and your mercy and your strength upon them, the courage, Lord, too, the courage to face each day, face another tomorrow. Lord, we pray your graceful presence upon them this day. Oh, Lord, we lift up all these concerns, increase our trust in you, oh God. We pray all these things in Jesus' name as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in the doxology, my tribute. Baby. 
pray. Gracious God, who calls us to abundant life, even when we are prone to forget to follow you, kindly direct us through the witness of scripture and the gentle guidance of your love. With you and for you, we live and move and breathe. In Jesus' name, amen. Fourth, looking around, seeing those things in the world, the love in the world, and sharing it with all you encounter. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wondrous love is this. 